This is how the flow looks like for my automated SAP data extraction process in Power Automate Desktop. In this video, I will be breaking down all the steps needed to build a similar flow for yourself. Please note that due to confidentiality of some of the information, I will blur some parts of the video. Without further ado, let us get started. Before we start with Power Automate, we would first need to record a script using SAP's built-in script recording and playback function. To access this built-in function, click on the last icon of the taskbar, then look for script recording and playback. Click on more button and define where you would like to save the script that will be recorded. Here for simplicity, I will just rename it as YouTubeDemo.VBS. Click on the record script button and we can start with our normal routine. My routine starts with entering the T code on the taskbar. In this case, it's KE24. Then I will start to put in all the parameters that is needed to run the report. Once all the parameters have been filled up, click on execute. Now that the table that I need has been generated, I will click on the spreadsheet icon and it will open up an Excel workbook with the name Worksheet in Basis 1. This is where the scripting for SAP ends. Navigate back to the record and playback user interface and click on stop. Copy the file path in the destination field and open it in File Explorer. Right click on the previously recorded script and open with a notepad or some other text editor. All these scripts are the steps that we took when generating our report. You can see here all the parameters that is typed into the different fields. This will be the script that we will use in our Power Automate flow later. With the SAP script ready, it is time to work on our Power Automate workflow. Open Power Automate Desktop and click on New Flow. I will name my new flow here SAP Data Extraction. This is where you will build your automation flow. We need to first think about what kind of variable that we want to pass into the script so that we can control the output based on the user's input. In my case, I need to get the inputs for year and month so that I can dynamically determine the range of data that I would like to extract. So the first step would be to ask the users to provide the year and month. To avoid users from inputting the incorrect information, I will give them a selection to choose from. Look for message boxes in the Actions tab and drag Display Select from List dialog into the flow. I will put in Year Selection as my title and then some message for the user to know what this message box is all about. Give them, give them a selection of years and click on Save. Next, I'll build a similar message box with a list of months to obtain users' input for their selected month. I want to give users an option to turn off the flow when they click on the cancel button. To do that, we will need to use the if block. Here we will set it up in a way that if the user select cancel, then we will stop the flow. Let us test run to see if it works correctly. If I click on cancel, then it will just stop the flow right away instead of continuing to the next block of action. Great, it works. I will now copy the same thing over and implement the same concept for the month selection message box. Next, we will use the action block run VB script. What you need to input for this block is simply just copy and paste over the script that we have previously recorded. 
The only thing that I need to change is the year and period so that the VB script will be executed based on the user selection. Remember at the end of our SAP routine, what's the output? It is the Excel workbook with title Worksheet in Basis 1. What we need to do here is right after running the script, instruct Power Automate to look for an Excel instance where the document name is Worksheet in Basis 1. Then we will use the Save Excel action block to save the exported Excel into the specified file path. For the settings, I will use the previous Excel instance. As for the save mode, choose Save Document As. For document format, choose XLSX Excel Workbook. For the document path, feel free to choose any path that you like. For the document name, I prefer to have a unique one so that every time I run my flow, they can be saved as a different file instead of overwriting the previously exported file. In order to do that, I need the current date and time. I will use the get current date and time action block to obtain the current date and time. Then what I will do is convert the date and time into a string so that it can be used to form my desired document name. You can define the custom format of the string here. Once done, click on save and go back to the save Excel action block. Add in the output string from the conversion block as part of the document name. We will close the Excel instance. And the main process is done. For the last step, I will just put a message box to inform the user that the flow has been completed. Now here is an additional step that you can add for error handling. If there's an output in the variable script error from the run VB script block, it means that something went wrong when running the VB script. So I will just add a prompt here to inform the user of the error and stop the flow. Let us do a test run here and see it in action. Great, data have been extracted based on the user input and named appropriately. Now we can see that the exported file is in the specified folder. Here's the summary of the entire flow building process that we have gone through just now. Let me know in the comment section below if you face any issue with Power Automate. If you enjoy this content, please give me a thumbs up, it always reaffirms that the content that I'm creating is valuable. That's all I have. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you later.